Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we finished Lynette's hangout. Well, at least one ending of it. And in my opinion, we got a weird ending. We didn't finish the, um, the story. We have no idea what's going on with Pierre or with that, uh, with that cat. And uh, today, I want to finish all of the endings get all the rewards and get all the photos basically so uh, yeah let's see what uh, what we can do now and then I want to see how I get this one and then this one here instead of ending there I can go to the other one so I have one here three I believe this will be four and I'm sure this will have two as well so let's continue from here or actually, should I end this one? I think I should continue this one. So if you watch exactly from the last video, you'll know what uh, what's going on with the story. So let's continue from here. Let's see if I remember. Interrogate Bernard. Ah, yeah, right here. Oh, I remember. I need to pay attention to whatever the to what she what Lynette said. So let's see. Something on your mind still. Well, even though it didn't feel like Bernard was lying, after talking to him, I'm getting an even stronger sense that something's not quite right. We investigated so quickly that perhaps we've missed a thing or two along the way. Let me activate deduction mode and consider things again from the top to see if we can find anything new. Is there still anything unresolved or strange that we should try to consider? Uh, there is an unexplained part in the operation of this tra um, trafficking ring. We discovered that Bernard is responsible for the trafficking, while Pierre deals with supplying the goods. Is there something else in the scheme that we're missing? Alright, let's see. So, communication. They always communicated in writing, and all of these letters have been burned, so we can no longer confirm or trace anything. Hand off. It's selected automatically. We've already proven that Bernard and Pierre coordinated their hands off by passing floating barrels to each other on open stretches of water. Okay. Connections. Any past member of the Fair family would probably have a number of connections outside of Fontaine. Indeed. Ledger. Bernard can be compensated for his work after completed achievement. No suspicious record would be left as long as he received the funds as an individual rather than through the humane, research, humane society. And ingredients. According to Sifro's investigation, Pierre has been formally reprimanded for his synth-related search and can no longer get any material from Fontaine's research institute. Okay, so... Um, is there anything else that is difficult to explain? I mean, his connection is alright. This one, probably. That instead of going through hum humane society, he never went as an individual. And the ingredients... They can no longer material from the research institute. I guess ledger, if that's it. I don't think that can be used as an There's answer. No rush. Let's well... Let's see if we can find any other suspicious points about this case. Okay. Uh, about what we found in Poisson. The Marachaussee Phantom found Bonnie and the Lefebvre pendant at Pierre's residence. That was the beginning point of our investigation. Alright. Okay. Let's see what we have. Why is Pierre a suspect? The pet handoff. According to Bernard, the trafficked animal were taken directly to Pierre's base rather than to Poisson. Okay. Bonnie has been with Pierre ever since the first meeting between Pierre and Marachaussee Phantom. And that's why Elodie came looking for her, but that shouldn't be all. Hmm. The pendant. The pattern on the pendant is proof that its owner is an illegitimate, illegitimate child of La Favre family, but this shouldn't be all. The end of La Favre. The La Favre family is infamous in Fontaine, and even their innocent Sions became targets of revenge, but Pierre just carried the pendant with him as if it was an ordinary piece of jewelry. And this is this is one associate with the only one that I have. And now I have initial suspicions. Pierre became the key suspect in the case because of a suspicious cat and a suspicious pendant. Yep. 
Why would he leave such an obvious trail Indeed. for us to follow when he took so much care to not leave any traces of imitation synth in his home? And about Bernard's Mark letter? claims to have received a letter last night from Pierre. In the letter, Pierre stated that he had gone into hiding. Is there something wrong with the letter? Let's see. What's suspicious about the letter Bernard received escape location? The letter didn't mention Pierre's hiding spot, although it makes sense that Pierre wouldn't want anyone to find him. The lost cat? Bonnie had already been on the loose for a few days when we found her yesterday morning. That means that she had already broken free when she, the letter was written. So that's not... Oh? The letter's purpose. If the point of the letter was to tell Bernard to get on his guard, then why didn't it also warn him about Bonnie? And the delivery method, regardless of whether he sent it anonymously or secretly delivered it himself, is no longer something we can follow up on. So what can we do now? What's suspicious about the letter Bernard received? Yeah, this one. Why didn't he... warn about the cat? This one. If Bonnie had imitation yeah. synth in her body, then she was a liability that had to be recovered at all costs. But if she wasn't carrying anything, then it would have made sense to tell Bernard not to worry. Indeed. Oh, I don't have but this one. About it, Bernard only attracted our attention in the first place because he came to look for Bonnie. We don't even, even know about him. Who wrote the letter also knew nothing about Bonnie's whereabouts, or they had a separate goal entirely. It is getting hard. Can I talk to Lynette again? Perhaps. Can I see where I'm on uh, on this story? Okay, I'm still here, so I haven't gone on that uh, on that route. Let's see, Elodie. Now behave and follow me to the interrogation room. Ow, that hurt. Ow. They're about to leave. Is it a raid? No, it's not. The letters plus 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 five initial suspicious plus five. I want to interrogate him myself. Can't I just choose current check of objective? Let's do this one. Sixteen. Twenty six. Check success. Okay. Hold it right there. Is there something else you need from me? Bernard and Pierre, they weren't really acting alone, were they? Huh? I see. It all makes sense now. Oh. Hey, what are you talking about? <laughs> Look, even our confessed criminal here has no idea what you're saying. Because he has been kept in the dark all along. And I assume it's the same with Pierre. Whoa! Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, they they prob there was probably a third guy that they don't didn't know about. But for all this time, neither of them knew that there was a third person all along. That never quite added up for me. Why did Pierre feel compelled to return to his home with Bonnie and the pendant, and make them so easy to find for the Marachose Phantom? Any animals Pierre received from the floating barrel should have been taken directly to his base. And considering his precaution situation, the pendant should have been at the last thing Pierre would leave lying around. Indeed. Are these two sentences connected? All of these things are in stark contrast to his usual meticulous and vigilant behavior. There's only one reasonable explanation. He was following orders, just like Bernard. He probably received the following instructions right before the phantom came knocking on his door. Bring the cat and the pendant, and our undercover agent will be sure to help you. Unbeknownst to him, however, the third person who wrote that letter to him had long decided to sacrifice him and Bernard to save themselves. Well, that's a clever plan. They instructed the two men to communicate through letters and barrels specifically so that they'd never get to meet each other. Honestly, this third person probably planned to sell both of them out from the very beginning. You can't be serious. There was a third person involved? If you focus only on Bernard's testimony, it's easy to believe that only Bernard and Pierre were working together. The case appeared extremely simple. 
Bernard did the trafficking, Pierre the imitation synth production, drugging, and stuffing. If everything accounted for, the third person would then be cleared of all suspicion. Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. If that's the actual truth, then as soon as Pierre is caught, you explain his side of the story and the third person will... Yep, which is why the third person made sure that Pierre would never be found again. Once Indeed. they had instructed Pierre to expose himself, the third person wrote to Pierre again, suggesting that everything had been taken care of, and he should take Bonnie and safely return to his base. Oh, they then ambushed Pierre and made him disappear. Did they kidnap of course, the Pierre's kidnapper? Of course, appearance at such a sensitive time immediately made him a prime suspect. Knowing that Bonnie had last been seen with him, all the third person would have to do from that point on would be to leave the Phantom to investigate the Humane Society and get Bernard to confess the truth. Bernard would then testify that Pierre was the one who came up with the whole plot and Pierre would be seen as having gone into hiding in anticip anticipation of getting caught indeed. Wait, so you're saying that the letter I received yesterday, the one that made me think Pierre was still alive, it was also sent by the third person? Most likely, yes. Is that what happened? I'll get back to headquarters right away and reinvestigate this case from the top. Not so fast. Chevra said that assumptions can be detrimental to solving a case. Someone among us, however, has been feeding us all kinds of preconceived notions ever since our first meeting. They suggested that Pierre's disappearance was an attempt to escape the judgment of the law, and that Pierre was a scion of the Lefebvre family. But if the disappearance is truly just a cover-up for a murder, then couldn't the true scion have been an illegitimate daughter, rather than an illegitimate son? Oh, oh, oh what a twist! Huh? <laughs> Haven't you taken this joke a bit too far? You're right. I did let a lot of assumptions get to my head when I first started to talk to you about the case. I'll make sure to correct my behavior. You deliberately fed us lies, but even you could not control every last detail of your plan. There was a flaw in your scheme, and something didn't quite go as planned. Getting the Marchose Phantom to notice Pierre was only the first part of your plan. Had they failed to take notice of the Humane Society, they could have cast a wider net. And you couldn't predict what they might possibly find, if given enough time. This, of course, was the main weakness of your plan. And once the Special Patrol and Lini got involved, it became even harder to control the outcome of the investigation. As someone accustomed to acting from behind the scenes, you didn't want to take the risk of personally proposing a raid on the Humane Society. So, you thought about pulling a few more strings, so all of the suspicion would point towards Bernard and his society. A great option, of course, would be to also dispose of Bonnie and leave her body at Pierre's base in anticipation of a later discovery. Once the Phantom expanded their search, it would only be a matter of time before they found Pierre's base. If a cat last seen with a suspect turned up dead at the imitation synth base, it wouldn't be long until the Phantom would figure out exactly how she had been mistreated and turn their eyes towards the one organization that has been sending boatloads of animals out of Fontaine. However, something unexpected happened at the base. Bonnie managed to escape in the chaos. Well, we got a, we got a smart cat over here. It was probably during your ambush of Pierre. You didn't even have the time to check if she had already been stuffed full of imitation synth. Bonnie agrees, I think. Still, you soon found another opportunity. Before long, Bonnie had made her way back into the city, and even popped up on the steam bird. Like Bernard, you desperately wanted to confirm the contents of her stomach, so you hurried to find us. Unlike Bernard, however, you were hoping that Pierre did have the time to make her swallow a load of imitation synth. While investigating the suspect's cat, we unexpectedly discovered that the suspect has been smuggling imitation synth using living animals as intermediaries. That was your plan, in any case. With that, you'd have been able to lead the investigation towards the Humane Society. But Bonnie was very lucky. But you weren't. You were extremely unlucky. Bonnie had managed to escape before Pierre was able to stuff her full of imitation synth. That part of your plan can no longer be carried out. 
but as shrewd as you were, you came up with another plan right away. You manipulated the Traveler and I to help you identify Bernard as a key suspect. You knew Lynette was investigating the case with Chevros, and you also knew of Lynette's previous encounter with the Lafro Lafavre family. You used the Lafavre name as a way to get us to join your investigation. With two extra bodies around, the Special Patrol is sure to soon take note of the strange event of Bernard somehow having a reason to look for Pierre's cat. <laughs> So, what you're saying is, I went to all that trouble just for the chance that you might put forth the suggestion that would lead you down the wrong path. Of course, you did far more than that. Just now at Lumidus Harbor, were you not the person who highlighted the suspicious activities of the society? By showing us the port's travel logs. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you even highlighted the society's activities during your compilation of the logs, so they'd be immediately visible to anyone examining the records. Moreover, the logs contained no records of the Port Authority's activities. In other words, your activities. <laughs> and what are you trying to suggest with that? That you're busted. I'm insinuating that you had plenty of opportunities to transfer the raw materials for imitation synth from the harbor to a boat. And then sail over to the meeting place full of floating barrels. Once Bernard had placed the animals in the barrels, you'd open the lid and also dump in the raw materials. As long as you did it before Pierre came for his pickup, there'd be no one the wiser. And that's how neither the trafficker nor the manufacturer knew there was a third person who supplied the raw materials and surreptitiously operated between them. First you got in touch with both parties and secured the raw materials, then you instructed Bernard to prepare the floating barrels and the animals. After that you slipped the raw materials into the barrels next to the animals and requested that Pierre pick up the barrels and bring them back to his base. Pierre manufactured imitation synth using the raw materials you provided, stuffed the animals and placed the animals back into the barrels. I feel like Chevros is the green light listening into this Pierre, conversation. Bernard then retrieved his animals and shipped them out of Fontaine once he had received enough for a full batch. This is the truth behind your smuggling ring. Lynette, you're smarter than I thought. I never put two and two together. <laughs> You've sure got an extremely lively imagination. So what do you think she's going to say next? Ever thought about a career in writing crime novels? But do you have any evidence? This one. But do you have any evidence? Hmm? Indeed. Mm -hmm. It appears that it's quite easy to predict what you'll think or say. Then if we apply that to this case, we can also think of a few places to look for incriminating evidence. You know very well that this case will not end until Pierre is found. So you will have him commit suicide out of fear and shame to end the investigation for good. That way, you can also pin the blame for the overseas smuggling activities, the theft of the harbor's confiscated raw materials, and even the Lefevere name on him. After all, dead men tell no tales. Ooh. But you still wanted to appear as if he had sent that last letter to Bernard, so you have to make sure he cannot be found until after Bernard has confessed to the authorities. To do that, you either will hide his body until you've found an appropriate time to set up a fake suicide scene, or you'll dump it someplace where it'll be hard to determine the exact time of death. Submerged in water, for instance. The location would ideally allow you to keep the body hidden for some time while also letting you keep an eye on it. You could also keep him in a very cool environment to be in later or set a fire to make it look like he had burned himself to a crisp. An example of such a place may be somewhere in your own boat or underneath the waters near Luminous Harbor. There are only so many options to hide a person's time of death after all. As long as the Phantom investigates each of the possibilities in turn, they'll surely find Pierre's remains. Especially since... As the prime suspect who will now be taken into custody, you will no longer have the time to move him or set up a fake suicide scene to cover up the murder. How absurd. And on what grounds will you order my arrest? Don't think for a second that your spouse of nonsense will amount to any kind of real argument. After all, I'm... Elodie Lefebvre! Hello, Chivros! of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, I hereby declare you as a suspect in the case. 
If you have any objections, you may raise them later during interrogation. Hi, Tolga Shevros was listening in. That's right. We received a message from Lumidus Harbor that you were going to investigate the Humane Society. We didn't expect to run into you at such a critical moment. Talk about conveniences. We noticed something else extremely interesting. Apparently, you often used all kinds of excuses to swap your shifts. And if one were to match the times of your shifts to the activities of the Humane Society and those of certain foreign ships, they'd find them to be an exact match. That... Wait. That's just a coincidence. This girl sh thought of all that... All, all that, those plans involving two parties, three parties, and didn't think to hide this type of evidence. Hello? Yes, I'm sure you have already thought of a dozen different ways to explain away the suspicious activities. But as far as evidence goes, that should be enough to warrant taking you into custody. Well, at least that. Don't worry. If it turns out that the guards are still unable to find any evidence after all this, Lynette and I will do everything in our power to clear your name. <laughs> Although judging by her reaction, I assume no follow-up from us will be needed. Indeed. <laughs> the Lefevers were infamous for using disguise and infiltration to achieve their goals. Who would have thought that they would have planted someone within the guards? Judging from the timeline, they likely arranged for you to enter the guards before the fall of the clan. But they probably didn't expect you to turn it to your advantage and use your job to save yourself during the purge. Not only that, but you actively participated in the interrogation, arrest, and judgment of the Lefevers during their fall, <laughs> thus clearing yourself of suspicion. You brutally and cruelly abandoned your allies as soon as they outlived their usefulness. Just like a lizard cutting off its own tail in order to live. You've been doing this for years. So... So you played me like a fool after all? What? <laughs> what was that word you used? Ally? You think that someone as foolish as him is worthy to call himself my ally? So, there's not that much evidence against you. You could have just go with no comment sections for about a couple hours. But you do this to just make yourself guilty. Hello? Are you smart or dumb? I cannot I cannot understand. They were worthless scum, all of them. Not just Bernard and Pierre. But those Lefevers too. They always just saw me as a tool. I lost all my chances of a normal life just because I was born into their lot. Well, you lost the same. Not only that, but because they wanted me to become an undercover agent, they stripped me of my name too. I had to live in constant fear of them while they were alive. Sounds like you lot to me. And even once they were gone, I had to continue to bury my heritage in my name. Always worrying that their enemies would come knocking at the door. Do you know anything about what I've been through over all these years? My life as the last Lefebvre? Earlier, yeah, this expression seems a bit unnatural. There's a hint of drama in the voice of the It feels like her anger may I be don't. part of... Okay. And neither do I care. No one ask about your past. You can save the speech for the trial. Are, are you... Are you for real? Aren't you a love bear victim too? Elodie, you're the only one still living under the shadow of a name. That's enough. Keep your hands where I can see them and do not resist arrest. If you have more to say, save it for the interrogation room. What a joke. <laughs> what a joke! <laughs> hey! Okay, she has a detonator. Don't come any closer. What's that? Uh, they took out appear to be very crude as if it's made from paper no mush <laughs> I've secretly planted loads of explosives in the humane society just one step closer and whether they're cats dogs or just unlucky human employees 
<laughs> They'll all be blown up into smithereens. And now you're not innocent anymore. Surely, you bunch of goody two shoes won't let that happen, right? Oh my god, deception, stealth, intimidation, or persuade. So try to convince Elodie to surrender. Ain't no way that's happening. Help Chevros to intimidate Elodie. There's no way that's happening. Assist Lini in deceiving Elodie. Launch a sneak attack on Elodie while she's distracted. Uh, let's do this. Wait, what? Why am I... What is this? Let's cooperation stealth plus 6. Do I, I need 15, right? Okay, so that ain't happening. Did she think I was blind? <laughs> Gardamex, get him! Not good. She's trying to escape. We need to end this fight as soon as possible. No problem. Opponent's done. <laughs> Busted so quickly, huh? Good thing I've already bought enough time to escape. Ah! No, you didn't. Has already begun to believe that she may have finally made it. She's knocked out by. Don't tell me the cat knocked her. Phew. So I was right after all. Oh, okay. It's easier to deal with the person causing the problem than the problem itself. Indeed. What about the device you had? This is it. Looks like it's just yep. a toy. So just bluffing. Guess that's probably why she suddenly flipped and knocked out Bernard. He probably knew that there were no explosives at the society. Oh yeah. That may be a possibility. She also pretended like she had a villainous breakdown as if she had no choice but to kill to escape her life. Wait, I could do more endings here? Well, given that she never even showed her face to Bernard and Pierre, I had my doubts that she'd have gone to the society in person to plant explosives. Thank you for your help, everyone. I'll take them back for thorough questioning and find someone better to take over the Humane Society. I might need a few statements from everybody. Would you be able to come with me? Uh, if statements are all you need, can Lenny provide them on my behalf? <laughs> I still need to go back and explain some things to the crew. I also had an appointment with the Traveler before we got interrupted. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, since I already forgot, you mean when you said I could stop by your play? Hmm. What did she say again? What? Why? Why am I to draw this? Uh, yes. Ah, so you do remember? Yes, I invited you to come over to our place. Once I'm done talking with the troop, I'll make a nice cup of tea and bring Bai to wait for you outside of my door. Talk to Lynette. <laughs> These guys are down. Uh, recharge with Lilette. The, the peg is going up. This game is not, is going to be Peggy 18. Mm, black tea and a cute kitty. Truly the best combo for standby mode. Indeed. Want some? A cute kitty, but not, not the real kitty. <laughs> ah, I see she's already starting to snuggle up to you. About Elodie's case, are you not interested in any follow-up developments from it? Not at all. Information is indeed very important. But if you were to try to collect every piece of information you come across, your efficiency would actually decrease. Plus, if you just think about it, what sounds more fun? Writing a statement or enjoying a tea party? Tea party. Great answer. That'd be my pick too. Had we not run into that case, we could have spent the entire day like this. <sighs> but now, I'm running low on both time and energy. The key isn't how long you spend instead, my boy. With quality time, you should be able to recharge more quickly. You're right. I can sense it. I'm recharging very quickly at the moment. I still have a question, though. When did you start to suspect Elodie? Mm -hmm. Something about her rubbed me the wrong way since the very beginning. But to be more precise, it was... Probably around the time when I saw Bonnie try to get away from her. After you arrested Bernard, back then Elodie tried to get close to Bonnie. Elodie tried to get close, but Bonnie deliberately dodged her. Maybe Bonnie had tried to evade her before at Pierre's base. Or perhaps Bonnie just instinctively knew that she wasn't a good person. Not everyone who likes cats is a good person. But if cats like you... You're probably alright. I don't know what to say about that. 
Fair enough. Humans tend to overthink things, but cats rely on their instincts, and they're pretty sharp. I mean, just look at Bonnie. She took a liking to you the moment you met. Hmm. <laughs> because I'm DMC. Nice. Save. Review invitation. Oh yeah, this one. Okay, that's the second ending done. And I guess this is the best ending possible, right? This is what I feel like. Alright. Let's see if I can get this one first. And then uh, I'll go this route. I still have to get... Three more endings, and I'm pretty sure two are here. Okay, I think you should head back to the dream session. I think you should head Bonnie. How about you? Do neither. I think this is the one. Yes. How about you do neither? <laughs> if it was that urgent, someone would have come looking by the price both for your troop and the Bonnie's owner. What you're saying is, since nobody's come looking, I can just keep hanging out with Bonnie for a bit longer? Is that really okay? Well, yeah, Bonnie sure seems to like that idea. And I need to draw 10, right? Well, Bonnie sure seems to like that idea. There you go. I drew exactly 10. Hmm. You make a good point. We can just stick around here for a while, so if anyone does come looking for you, they'll find okay, you. Okay, well... Assuming Bonnie hasn't strayed too far from where she went missing... There's a chance we might bump into our owner in either the Steambird offices or the restaurant. So, stick around here in standby mode? Yeah, that suits me. Sounds good. If you're going to standby mode, shall we find some cat's food? Oh, good idea. Bonnie's definitely hungry. <laughs> shall we get some snacks for us too? May as well. We could be here a while. Well, since you've got cat food and snacks, let's find a place to chill. Trying to find somewhere I could space out earlier. Uh, I mean, collect my thoughts. I figured the cafe might be a good shot. Hmm. All right then. Plan of action: spend the whole day spacing out. Uh, I mean, in standby mode. Yep. There we go. Nice. Alright, so I did this one. That's just, wow, how to end the uh, hangout fast. Just, <laughs> just do this one. Okay, and now I guess, so I've done this route, the, the Bonnie route, I would like to say it. Then let's go the other route. So let's do this again and see if I can find the, the other route. I believe it's the part route. Okay, so let's see. I helped Bonnie. I did it with the Phaetomata the last time. So let's see. Head back to the drinks reception. <sighs> back to the drinks reception. I mean, clearly you don't want to go. You could just, I don't nope. know. I said it was your decision. I'm not going to waste any more energy dragging my feet. Besides, the drinks reception is technically part of the job as an official publicity event. So if I bail on it... You'll feel guilty inside. I might get sued for breach of contract, and that would be a huge pain in the butt. Uh, one other thing. Do you want to come with me? If you're free, I mean. Sure, then you'll have at least one friend there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Alright, so now we're going this route. There you are, Lynette! Where did you disappear to? No, mage. Ione and I have been looking everywhere for you. Wait, where did you get the cat? Don't worry about the cat. I found her outside. Do either of you happen to recognize her? Um, I don't think so. Could belong to one of the guests, I suppose. <sighs> Fair enough. That was a long shot. So sorry we couldn't help you, Lynette. Uh, don't worry. We'll ask around for you. Leone's probably just being forgetful. Maybe you could leave her with us. We'll take her to the reception desk and see if they know anything. I love how MPC34 right here I'm talks. Looking. Sure. I would help, but I'm a little preoccupied. Sorry to dump this on you. It's no trouble at all. We're happy to help however we can. Also, uh, if it's no trouble, I mean, could we maybe get an autograph? And maybe a photo too? Uh. He net or me. Leone, 
You can't spring that on her now. Not while she's working. At least wait until the event's finished. One last thing, Lynette. Director Mary is looking for you. We'll take the cat to the front desk now. See you later. <sighs> You're so popular. You're not the one to talk, Illumin. I'm not usually required at these kinds of events, so I don't even have an event mode. All right, guess I'd better go see the director. Spectacular choreography, a masterpiece of mise en scène, and the performance, oh my, groundbreaking, dripping with the uh, je ne sais quoi. My congratulations on another magnificent show, sir. Yes, yes, I for one was particularly captivated by the clearly allegorical narrative undertones. The Lost Puppet shines a spotlight on the impact of technological advances in our modern society, <gasps> particularly as they relate to changing modes of emotional expression and the challenge of mutual intelligibility. Such a pioneering work, so far ahead of its time. A tour de force of avant-garde theater. <laughs> I can already see the headlines of tomorrow's newspapers. They will certainly be singing your praise, Director Maryu. <laughs> but it was a group effort, of course. To convey emotions in a silent show with no facial expressions, the entire cast had to go above and beyond. Everyone truly outdid themselves. Uh, speaking of the cast, Jillian, another strong performance from you in Director Maryu's latest show. As, of course, we've all come to expect from your numerous successful collaborations to date. That's quite an overstatement. I've only ever played supporting roles. On that point, you stated a few months ago in an interview that you were looking to secure a leading role in your next show. What led you to the decision to stay in a supporting role this time around? Um... <clears throat> we had a discussion about this, and while Lynette hadn't previously performed in an acting role, we were blown away by her talent, and she was a perfect fit for this character. Quite simply, this was the role she was born to play. Exactly. I was honored to share the stage with her. Lynette worked extremely hard in all of the rehearsals, and she's an incredibly talented actress. We could get Furina. Oh, Lynette's back! Hey, Lynette, where have you been? Are you in standby mode? Some reports say you switched that state to recharge after a show. Ah, oh, <coughs> method acting, of course. Such a compelling portrayal of a mechanical puppet could only be achieved by an actor who lives and breathes their role even while off stage. Those seemingly stilted movements were, in fact, an inspired portrayal of the character. The ostensibly bad acting, in reality, was the product of supreme acting skill. Oh, uh, I went outside and there was this cat there, so I played with the cat for a bit. A cat? <laughs> We've long heard that you are a kind soul, as well as an incredible actress. No wonder your debut performance has garnered such popularity. This show looks on track to break box office records for avant-garde theater. Lynette, any words for the fans? Um, not really, no. Ah, uh, I believe Lynette is trying to say that the act of performance itself is the actor's true means of connecting with their fans. Oh, I see. Lynette, any comments? <sighs> mm-hmm. Right, exactly. But don't you want the fans to know how you're feeling right now? After the hugely successful opening of your first ever show? Poor girl. It's Leave true. her alone. I'm sure the fans would love to learn a bit more about you, too. How interesting. <laughs> Observe Lynette to see how she's doing. I need a 10. Eight. Well, I'm not observing her anymore. That's not very calm. She seems fine. No, Lynette, she doesn't. How do you find acting compares with performing in a magic show? What does the future hold for you, Lynette? Uh... She looks so uncomfortable. Lumin. Daijobu. <laughs> yeah, it's just... <sighs> Turns out I can't cope with this stuff even in tea party mode. Tea party mode. Hmm. 
That's a power saving mode for participating in conversation at tea parties. Normally, I can get through an entire conversation just with. Mm hmm. Oh, that's true. And how interesting. Sounds like an idol to me. But at a tea party, I'm not normally subjected to a constant stream of questions. <sighs> the energy consumption of that interview just now was three times as much as the average tea party. Well, it's just a big adjustment. Give it some time. Maybe after a few more interviews, you'll get used to it. Just give it some time. Mm. I think I'd rather pray that I never have to do it again. Lynette, Director Mariu would like you to join the group photo to commemorate the successful opening of the show. Hey, no way. Mm. A group photo? It's just the members of the troupe. Along with Maloney and Corentin. Everyone's waiting for you. <sighs> Alright then. See you in a minute. Three, two, one, smile. My thanks to each and every one of you here for your help in making The Lost Puppet a success. The group photo is already being printed as I speak. You can collect your copy from the first floor after the drinks reception concludes. May it serve as a reminder of this fabulous performance every time you see it. Marry you! <laughs> Get over here. Let's have another drink. There's a few things I need you to glance over for me. Yeah, the reception is still going. I thought the Poorly Ned. was the final hurdle. <laughs> well, at least there's no more people hounding me with questions i just need to find somewhere to switch to standby mode and the time will fly by i hope got the second floor to pass the time can i get some food here oh <laughs> what restaurant sells recipes my guy i'm buying <laughs> your entire stock I'm so curious what would a, rest would a restaurant do if someone just comes and clears out their menu. Will they be sad or or happy about it? Well, that uh, restaurant doesn't have anything else to sell now. Sorry, every customer in here. Wait, that's Furina. <sighs> Hotel de Boer's Il Flutant is as wonderfully sweet as ever. You managed to get an invite during the reception too? I'm so glad you're here. Traveler? Lynette? Oh, wait, hold on. What do you mean, manage to get an invite? <laughs> I'm an expert in the dramatic arts. Of course I was invited. Naturally, people wanted to hear my comments on the emerging art form that is the Masked Mind Show. So, what do you think? Remarkable. And a very worthwhile artistic endeavor. Exploring a character with no lines or facial expressions who can only communicate how they feel through their movement. Your performance was beyond anything I could have imagined, Lynette. Clearly, this was a very suitable role for you indeed. Basically, I think I'd give it a positive review overall, just not as gushing as the crowd downstairs. So, you thought they were pretty over the top too? In fairness, it's normal to bring along some vocal supporters for publicity when a new show opens, but still, this was something else. Then again, I'm no specialist in avant-garde theater. Uh, maybe I'm just not well acquainted with their review criteria. Or maybe it's because I came to the show with some preconceived expectations. I never have expectations and you'll never be disappointed. Mary you script a while back. What original draft? Oh? He didn't show it to you? It must have been a few months ago. He came to me to get some advice from an experienced performer's perspective. And then asked if I could write a few reviews of his new play. I had a lot on my plate at the time, so I had to turn him down. I only skimmed a few sections, but they seemed quite different from the final version. I can't say I remember the plot, but... I don't know. The protagonist just seemed more complex, I guess. Especially in the last two scenes. 
Still a mechanical puppet on the outside, of course, but she seemed to have more emotional depth on the inside. Emotional depth? Oh, <laughs> I'm just thinking aloud here. Don't take it to heart. Besides, a script and a play are two very different beasts. There are so many fine details to consider when turning a story into a stage production. More than most people could imagine. Especially with a novel art form like a masked mind show. I'm sure Mary Yu had his reasons for the changes he made. Hmm. <clears throat> Change of topic. I see you've escaped the crowds to seek refuge on the second floor. Fame can be overwhelming at first, can't it? Uh, perhaps you'd benefit from hearing about the experiences of a veteran celebrity such as myself. No thanks, I'm good. <laughs> Pretty sure this will be my first and last time in this situation. Uh, hey, at least let me finish. I have top tips on dealing with belligerent reporters, slipping away to hunt down snacks during the intermission. Mm. Tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> she will turn her ears, ears off. Mommy, we must partake of Hotel de Boer's fine desserts as we talk, lest they go to waste. <sighs> that was very educational. Education is in the word I'd use. They didn't mention acting once in the whole Expect conversation. Most of the people downstairs have left by now. Time to grab my copy of the group photo and get home. The photo must be in this envelope right here. Ah, <sighs> it's finally over. Thank you for sticking around for so long. If it wasn't for you, I don't know how I would have standby mode in my way through the last few hours. Just here to help. And an event like this stressful but enough to water halfway through. Hmm. When you left the event midway, what was the real reason? <sighs> I mean, if you really don't want to talk about it. It's fine. It's just... It was such a minor thing. While I was on stage, there was a moment when I felt like someone was looking at me. It was only for an instant, and I didn't even see who it was. But somehow, I knew it was a look of contempt. What, you have a stalker? Welcome to fame life. I got a vague sense of it again during the reception. Like someone was giving me an evil stare. <laughs> but I couldn't figure out who it was. Normally, I'm used to lurking in the shadows on the stage and spying on other people. What? So, it was strange. Feeling like I was the one being spied on this time. Well, the creep transformed into the creeper. Could it have something to do with the original script for Ina Mansion? Maybe someone's jealous of you? You did land a leading role in your first show. Or, someone just took a disliking to me for no real reason. Sometimes you can like one person and dislike another for equally pointless reasons. Anyway, it was just a momentary stink eye. That's all. Nothing for you to worry about. Well, if you're not worried, I'm not worried. Okay, problem solved. I'm gonna take this envelope and go home now. You heartless puppet, you've ruined this world. Hand over the roll of it immediately. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing to it. Threat leather. You have That's destroyed this not work even of close to a threat leather. Step down from the leading role at once. Based on the tone, I'd say threat letter is right. No, it's not. This is far more serious than moment, and I think uh, we need to get to the bottom of it. Examine the letter to see if there is anything amiss. Think back to what was happening on the first floor while we're taking some time out. Let's examine the letter first. Contain the group photo, the threat letter, and some photograph of Lynette from during the show. I should stop this. The letter demands that Lynette step down from the leading role, but stop short of saying what will happen if she doesn't. Okay. Neither of us recognize the handwriting. It's messy, perhaps to cover the tracks, or maybe this person has just messy handwriting. And now let's think back about what's happening on the first floor while we were talking about what we were talking about there was were a lot of people downstairs at the time any one of them could have slipped the letter into the envelope all the envelope were left on the table on the first floor but nobody was tasked 
with watching them I could ask reception but it's not like they saw anything I don't think we're gonna find any more clues here shall we ask Mario what he makes of you have destroyed this work of art yes let's whatever destroyed means it could have something to do with the original script that Farina mentioned also I'm gonna have to ask you to stick around a while longer don't worry I ain't going anywhere Ah, I can't believe how well the whole Lynette's debut acting role thing worked out. Even the avant-garde box office is laughing it up. What is the sound? <laughs> how could I ever have doubted you? If you hadn't stuck to your guns and kept sending those invitations, this opportunity would have passed us by. See, I told you. All the times she'd refused in the past were all the more reason to keep inviting her, because it turns into a big talking point. Can you imagine if you'd gone with Jillian? You'd have been lucky to get half the ticket sales you've ended up well, with. Well, I think we found the culprit. True. Well, Jillian still needs to get a few more productions under her belt. Do you have a moment, Director Mario? Uh, oh! Ah, if it isn't the star of the show! Uh, we were just talking about you! Hmm? Oh, and is that the legendary traveler with you? Sup? I'm guessing you're here to discuss the show with the director? <laughs> oh, you're a talented and hardworking actress, Lynette. It's no wonder you're getting such rave reviews! Okay. Despite his effusive words, the look in the eyes suggests he's not quiet. So the light of Lynette's newfound stardom. Then why did you? Why the hell did you invite her? I'll leave you artists to discuss your work in peace. Uh, Mary, you make sure you give your star performer and her friend your full attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Certainly will. Lynette carries the fortunes of our entire troupe on her shoulders. <laughs> Mr. Maloney. An investor, or something, I think. I've never asked him. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, what can I do for the two of you? I'm afraid I'll have to dash soon as I'm meeting some friends from the newspaper. Otherwise, I'd love to stay longer. Well, we won't take up too much of your time. We heard that the original script for The Lost Puppet was quite different from the final show. I'm kind of curious to know what the protagonist was like in that version. Oh, well, this is a surprise. I didn't think you'd be interested in that sort of thing. It's not uncommon for scripts to undergo major changes as they're being brought to the stage. But I'm afraid there's not much to tell you in this case. The protagonist has stayed the same from the beginning to end. A mechanical puppet with a bumbling body but a sensitive soul. A stranger in time who doesn't belong. There's no doubt about it. You are the protagonist and the protagonist is you. The success of one is the success of the other and that's what made this show an artistic try. I mean he's kind of right. Mm. Sorry, you've lost me. Can you put it in plain words? You make the show, the show doesn't make you. <laughs> All right then. Delving deep in the search of core truths is the job of an artist, after all. You shouldn't give your attention to early drafts of the script, Lynette. All it would do is sow confusion where you already have clarity. The current script is the final version because it is the best version. And your performance best brings that script to life. Why, if it weren't for you, I doubt any audience would give our show the time of day. Well, yes, if everyone is happy with Lynette's performance, then how to explain this? What letter? Oh my goodness! I just read this letter. Hello? Appear surprised. So that's uh, alright. A surprise in genuine. Destroyed this work of art? Really? Well, Director Mario, any idea who might have written it? No. 
Who on earth would write such nonsense? We have found it in the envelope containing the group photo. Could it be someone involved in the production? I mean, I don't think involved in the production means the part of the production or part of the actors. Because this could be someone who got denied the role or something. I don't know. Well, we found it in the envelope. Absolutely not. Without Lynette, this show would be over. Everyone's hard work would go to waste. No, there's no way that this is someone from the troop. Is there any way Lynette could lie low until this blows over? Yeah, maybe Jillian could fill in for me for a while. What? No way, out of the question. The protagonist has to be played by Lynette. Jillian can't... She's just... Not what the audience. And now I'm 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 sure so this is the culprit. <laughs> she became a bit strange. Are there dead darting around and he's lowering his voice? Oh, I've got it. It's a competitor. Yes, this letter must be from a competitor of ours who's trying to get under Lynette's skin. You can't lie low. That's just what they want you to do. The moment you step back from performing, they'll put their rumor mill into overdrive and drag us through the mud. They're just waiting for their chance to kick us while we're down. A competitor? Really? Definitely. Those lowlifes. Slander and libel are all their specialties. They drown out the truth with a flood of misinformation. And they stop at nothing once they get riled up. You sound very familiar with their methods. <laughs> oh, there's so many of them out there. Fame always seems to attract haters. No matter what you do to try and keep everyone happy. But don't worry. I will get to the bottom of this. Stay strong, Lynette. And keep up the good work on stage. I have to go and meet my friends from the newspapers now. But rest assured, I'll be discussing countermeasures with them. So... A competitor, huh? Do you think that's it? Ain't no way that's it. Mm, I kinda doubt it. We've dealt with those types before. Usually their goal is to steal our venue for their own show, or to cover up a scandal by planting a story to divert public attention. But, at the moment, I don't think anyone's got a reason to do any of that stuff. Let alone pull a stunt like this. A threat letter is quite extreme. Besides, when I felt that evil stare, I'm pretty sure it was coming from somewhere backstage. So that rules out a lot of people. I'm actually more concerned about Mary you. When I mentioned Jillian, his reaction was pretty unusual. Okay. Especially since Maloney mentioned that the initial plan was to cast Jillian as the lead. Well, now I'm more than 100% sure who the culprit is. Sounds like there was an original protagonist as well as an original script. Hmm. I should probably go talk to her. Maybe with a bullet bulletproof vest, just in case. Yep. She told me she lives in the flow of Sandra. Are you the one? L Lynette? What are you doing? You're not welcome here. Well, now you're three hundred percent more suspicious. I've been to the Flo of Sandra plenty of times before. And this is the first I'm hearing about me not being welcome. Things are different around here. You might be used to a crowd of bootlicking morons fawning over you wherever you go, but not down here. We we know what you are. We bootlicking morons. She's got a bone to pick with you, I guess. Well, make it that make that four hundred percent. I don't know. I've never met this kid before. Kid. Gina, stop that. Go home now. Oh, never mind. Jillian. I thought this was Jillian. No, but how many times do I have to tell you that had nothing to do with Lynette? If you don't leave right now, I swear I'll, I'll, I'll never invite you to one of my shows ever again. <laughs> Just because Lady Farina speaks highly of you, it doesn't mean you're all that. I mean, Lady Farina probably speaks highly of me, so uh, j j just saying. I'm so sorry. Gina's always been a strong-willed child. That's why I never let her visit me at work. 
It's okay. I have younger siblings too, so I get it. She's in her rebellious phase, huh? If you're talking about uh, Fremine, that guy is in no way rebellious. If you let angsty kids get you riled up, they'll drain all your energy. So don't worry, I won't let it get to me. <sighs> well, the situation's a little different in this case, but still, thank you. So, what brings you to the flu of Sandra? Well, uh, can I talk about the original protagonist? <laughs> we heard about it from Maloney. He said you were originally supposed to play the lead. Maloney, huh? Of course he couldn't keep his mouth shut. I mean, we asked, so... Sorry. I'm sorry. I never mentioned it because Director Mary, you was very clear that I mustn't let any of it affect you. Uh, Lynette... Yeah, circumstances have changed. Lynette received this letter. What's this? It's the third time I've seen this letter. I know what we're talking about. I'm not skipping. I'm not like any other person. I'm gonna find this panic and doubt. The sender thinks that Lynette has destroyed the show. Could it have anything to do with the original script and the protagonist? I, I don't know. Uh, who would do something like this? Okay. If Gillian was the other girl, the one that straight up almost accused me of everything just by standing here i would have 500 percent be sure that that one is gillian and that one is uh, the one who sent the letter but now this gillian seems uh, she's quite kind so does not assume anything ever again don't be scared jillian just tell us what you know it's jillian okay i'll try it's true I was originally cast as the lead in The Lost Puppet. I've worked with director Mary Yu many times before, but only in minor roles. The audiences and critics never had much to say about me. A few months ago, Mary Yu started working on a new show, so I plucked up the courage to ask him if I could take the leading role. I think I skipped something. I wasn't paying really attention to the last part. Anyway. He was hesitant, but he agreed to let me try for the part. We did a few rehearsals. Everything seemed to be going okay. But then... There's... been a change of plan, Jillian. The leading role will now be played by Lynette. And Lynette doesn't want to do that. Lynette? But she always turns these things down, doesn't she? And that's why we cannot afford to waste this opportunity. I mean, the director is kind of right. Chilean, I understand how you must be feeling. But Maloney and myself have to do what's best for the production as a whole. Next time, the lead will be yours. I promise. I've heard these words before and it never goes as planned. I was incredibly disappointed at first. But I also know full well that I don't have Lynette's star power. Yeah, the Lynette's marionette power. Without Lynette, how could we ever convince people to pay money to go and see a masked mime show? And if the show was a flop with me in the leading role, how would I answer to the director and the rest of the cast? Then, I got to meet you on stage and found that you're really down to earth. In a way that not many celebrities are. You were kind to everyone, and your performance wasn't bad. Whatever disappointment I had left at that point, I certainly wasn't about to take it out on you. By wasn't bad, you mean it wasn't great either. So, I'm guessing Mariu changed the script to simplify the protagonist, make her a dumbed-down version of the mechanical puppet that I could actually play. Well, Lynette, when you say it like that, now I feel sorry about you. He did make some changes to the script, yes. How do we get our hands on the original drafts? Who currently has it? Do we really care about that? Jaik, one of the other cool. editors. He likes to collect Dr. Mariu's old drafts because he hopes to be a director himself one day. He also lives nearby. I can arrange for you to meet him at the tavern. Makes sense. I always see him talking to Mariu. Alright, see you at the tavern then.
My Rielan almost died, so Furina, you're on healing death duty. Sorry to keep you waiting. Jillian brought me up to speed on the situation. I'm here to help however I can. Here, this is the script you're after. It's very rough, like he was constantly editing it. It's practically unreadable. That's always well, the way with pen and paper drafts. I mean, yeah. Even the final script is full of last-minute changes by the director. There should be a cleaner copy of the original script in here somewhere. Ugh, sorry, it's all a bit mixed up. I just grabbed the whole stack of paper since I was in a rush. No problem. Now activating search mode. I'll go through <laughs> one page at a time. Oh, I'm with Lynette at this point. So let's see investigation notes. There are new speculation amongst the notes. There are about shows of different styles. Those on the first page have turned yellow. They must be quite old. Investigation. Look for mentions of Mary U. Search mode plus five. And I need. There's twelve cards. I'm pretty sure this is not uh, random. There's a pattern here. I'm pretty sure I can see the pattern. There's 12 cards. I need to do a 15. If I do the middle every time, do I get... Okay, I got more than 15. So I guess this works. Let me do middle every time and see if I can find the pattern. Mary X Nest does appear in some earlier clippings, but mostly in articles bemoaning a series of lukewarm receptions for an experimental art form. An empty scenes at avant-garde play despite critical acclaim. In more recent years, there are many reports praising Mary Hughes as a forward-thinking director, one of the greats of his era. The articles are written by a variety of authors from an eclectic range of fields. Quarantine and Amory are the most prophylic actors. Okay, that's one. Uh, let's see the original script now. Let's see what the difference are between the current version of the Lost Puppet and the original script. So read carefully another investigation. Again, I'll do the middle. Okay, there's no pattern there. Check failed. After a quick read through the skip script, I understand the gist of the story. So you did nothing, basically. Okay, let's see the official script. Of the last part details how the dancing puppet protagonist is rejected by humanity and then begins searching for a meaning of life. Uh, let's do this one. Bro. After a quick read through the skip, I understand the gist of the story. Well, let's see. Activate search more and investigate the documents. Do we have any more documents here? Yes, we do. So, let's see the manuscript. Mary used original script is littered with amendments. It's practically legible. Let's read carefully and let's see. First one. What is that? That's four. So, still not. Ah, I hate this card system. <laughs> Why is everything to chance leading to chance? Nope, I can read this as all. And all drawings. If I can read the all drawings, then uh, this is kind of bullshit. This screen seems to be Miriam's older work. Some photographs of the life person are attached. Let's do this one. 915. Okay, I'm drawing only the low cards. Well, I got one out of er the rest. <laughs> The photos from recent years show fancy venues and polished set, but the earlier photos show much more humble venues. I don't see anything else noteworthy. The protagonist returns to the ruins where she began and performs a dance in honor of her deceased companions. She dances until her joints have rusted stiff and mechanical parts are falling from her body. Hmm. Yep. That's not yep. something a novice could hope to pull off after just a few months of rehearsals. The basic plot is the same. She loses the ability to dance due to wear and tear in the in her circuitry. In her circuitry, but there's more emotion behind the scene. The memory of her former companions coming to peace with her life. The simple set and solo performance means uh, the lead actress has to carry the whole scene herself. It's a much more demanding role than in the final script. <sighs> Frankly, I think that the original script is much better. And the original lead is the best fit. 
Okay. Jillian, shall I go tell Mario to put you back in the leading role? <laughs> what? Are you serious? But the next show is at the Opera Epicles. It's such a huge opportunity. My guy, does Lynette look like she cares about this stuff? But not such a rare one for me though, right? Well, yes. That's different. This isn't you as part of a magic duo. It's a chance to star as the main character in a show. You'll reach whole new heights of fame. Again, she doesn't care about that. That's why Lini is the main star of the show. Um, fame in small doses has its perks, but too much and I'll get overloaded. Talking like a real puppet. But if you play the lead, the fame will be yours. And I get to be free. Sounds like a win-win, don't you think? Yep. It'll never work. There's no way Director Mariu or Maloney would ever agree to it. <laughs> Leave it to us. The set for Act 4 would need to change, as would all the marketing materials. And that would mean asking Maloney for a lot more Mora. Changing actors at the last minute is just too risky. If anything went wrong, it could bankrupt the whole troupe. Unlucky. Plus, Maloney's friends have already published a ton of articles saying how this is the role that Lynette was born to play. No one else can play the protagonist now. If Lynette quit the show and I took her place? Uh, it would destroy, destroy the reputation of Maloney's friends. None of their future articles would have any credibility. I mean, yeah, that would be fake, ma fake marketing. If Lynette left, they'd sooner stop the whole show than let me take her place. Stop the whole show? All the people in the troop, months and months of everyone's hard work would all be for nothing. No wonder Mario will say anything to try and keep Lynette on board. Convincing him to replace the lead actress won't be easy. Well, I mean, yeah, in a show, replacing the lead actress would be quite weird. Ah, okay, card time. Let's decide the fate. The newspaper claiming... Uh -huh, so if I got all of the clues, I would have gotten more here. Uh, this one. Nope. Mario will never back down while he's got Maloney breathing down his neck. It's not good, Mario will never consent to it. Mm, consent, huh? Then, uh, how about we don't ask him? <laughs> Lynette, I don't think that's how it how it works. Explains her idea to the group. Let me hear In that. that way, he'll be forced to make a choice. Can I uh, hear the idea too? You know, the one that actually makes decisions? You know, it's a little crazy, but it might actually work. N no way. It's not worth taking such a huge risk just for a chance to be in the spotlight. Jillian, you said before... Whatever disappointment I had left, I wasn't about to take out on you. In other words, that disappointment is still there, but you've kept it bottled up inside. Be honest. You still hope to play the leading role, don't you? I... But the thought of putting so many people out just for my sake? You think they'd be put out? Hmm. That's not how I see it. Jillian, you were more dedicated than anyone during the rehearsals for the original script. We all saw how hard you worked for this role. And I think you know that unless we decide to make a stand here, the path we're on is only going to take us further and further from our dreams, all of us. So take it from me, you would not be putting us out. Not one bit. Where the plan succeeds is up to you. Uh, I don't know you, but uh, uh, yeah, do your, do your thing. Okay. You can do it. Good Let's job. Do it. I will play my part. Yes, I knew you'd come around. All right, I'll let the rest of the troop know, and we'll start preparing immediately. <sighs> Wonderful. This solves everything. Wait, but what about the threat letter? Do you have any idea who sent it? No, I have no idea. As long as we stick to the plan, I'll give up the lead role, so it won't matter anymore, right? Mm, we'll stick to that, but I feel like that letter is addressed to Lynette as a person, not Lynette the actress. But 
Surely you want to know who it's from. If they're out there and no one's keeping an eye on them, what if they come looking for you? <laughs> They'll find Arlecchino at their back door. Are you seeing that's a problem? Um, I doubt they will. It's supposed to be a threat, but they didn't even say what would happen if I don't meet their demands. <laughs> Plus, the handwriting is kind of childish. Doesn't look like a professional intimidator to me. There's such things as professional intimidators? Hello? Who knows? Maybe it was just a fan of yours having a moment. A fan? Of me? Hmm, I guess. Maybe there's someone out there who really appreciates your talent. Even in the supporting roles. Could the letter be from one of Gillian's fans? Why am I doing this? Uh, we'll do yes. Yes, it is 18. Gillian's sister mentioned that Farina spoke highly of Lynette, but when could she have heard that? Wait. Wait. Yes. <laughs> we just talked to Farina. Was she spying on us? Mm, it's getting late. We should be leaving. So suddenly, I think Lynette's got the it's got the hint. Come on. Yep, she's got the hint. Grabs your hand and leads you out of the tavern. Sorry for manhandling you. Me. You looked like you were seconds away from figuring out who sent the letter, so I had to act fast. Yep. Stop reading, people. I'm not a book. But is it, where it, was it Gillian's sister? Nothing gets past you. Mm-hmm. Well, almost got. Just because Lady Farina speaks highly of you, it doesn't mean you're all that. Well, now make it 600% you're the one that sent let the letter, assuming everything. I'm so sorry. Gina's always been a strong-willed child. That's why I never let her visit me at work. Farina hasn't released her official review of the Lost Puppet yet, which means Gina disobeyed her sister and secretly came to watch her at work. Why is this in the parenthesis? Just say it out loud, don't think it. I guess she must have snuck into the drinks reception and overheard our conversation with Farina. We love the, the that hotel security. She idolizes Jillian, both as an older sister and an actress. And she watched as the dream role Jillian had been waiting to play for so long got snatched away from her by some amateur who's never acted before. Well, when you say it like this, I would be mad too. To make matters worse, all the critics were hailing this amateur as a perfect fit for the role. And even Fontaine's former biggest star was praising her abilities. It was too much for her to take. She wrote the letter in a fit of anger. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Aren't you gonna do something about it? Like I said, getting angry at angsty teenagers is draining. Besides, if it was my younger brother or sister and they found out I'd been treated unfairly or had an opportunity stolen from me, they'd definitely do something far worse. I can imagine, but not, not Fremine. I was in Jillian's position once. Back when Linny and I were starting out, before we got famous, we just had to take things a day at a time. Doing our shows, slowly trying to build up our reputation, so I can understand Gina's frustration. Still, she could definitely use some pro tips on how to write a threat letter. No wonder she's so hostile towards you, she must have been the one giving you that evil stare, right? The fact that you can sense an evil stare is uh, is quite fascinating. No, the way she looks at me is indignant, frustrated, but not malicious. Plus, she didn't even try to hide how she felt. Oh, yeah. Whoever was giving me that evil stare was backstage. Blending into the crowd at a drinks reception is one thing, but trying to blend in backstage, where everyone's on high alert waiting to be called on stage, would be a lot more difficult. Are we dealing with a professionist here? We'll find out who it is before too long. In two days' time, at the next show, I think it will become very clear. On that note, guess I'll see you at the Opera House. Bye for now. Bye. Uh, let me guess. Yep, Opera Epicles.
You're here. Lynette and Jillian are busy getting ready, so please come with me. Okay. And the curtain, the curtains up when the show begins. Act one in the ruins. That puppet in the middle. Is that Lynette? She's so pretty. Oh, they're doing this. She has a mask on. It's starting. Keep your voice down. Oh my god, I ain't reading that. <laughs> the protagonist, the dancer, has been abandoned in some ruins. She suspects it's because of a health condition with her legs, which has affected her ability to dance. But then she finds the abandoned puppets who look just like her. Only then does she realize her illness is just a mechanical breakdown and she's just a dancing puppet. Wait, they changed wow. the script? I thought it would be hard to follow, but in the end, it was actually very clear. Who's talking in the middle of a of a show? Even though her face was expressionless and she didn't speak the whole time, I felt like I could really understand how the protagonist was feeling. Act two, the journey. Ah, oh, some mechanical puppets believe in a myth. At the end of the world, there is a god of puppets who can turn puppets into human beings. And so, the protagonist and her companion begins their quest. But the myth is a lie, spread by someone with nothing but contempt for puppet kind. At the end of their journey, they are kidnapped, dismantled, melted down and abused. The protagonist helped her companions escape, but in the process became trapped under the rubble of a crumbling building. She closes her eyes and enters into a deep sleep. Director Mary, you really is a master of his craft. And so is the actress in the lead role. I have a friend who saw the show on the opening day. They thought the critics overstated how good it was. But I gotta say, the protagonist is incredible. Act to close is to thunderous applause from the I crowd. I can't believe it's only been a few days since the last show. Lynette's improved so much. Just, wow. I'm speechless. Words simply cannot do justice to the sheer excellence we witnessed from Lynette on stage today. Your pension for the hyperbolic strikes again, Almery. Clearly, you weren't at a loss for words when you were writing your article. I saw you hand it to the journalist. Trying to get your critique into the papers the moment the show is over, are you? <laughs> well, you know how it is. The early critics get all the readers. Wouldn't you agree, Mary You? <sighs> Don't tell me you, you realized. Hmm? What's the matter? Uh, cat got your tongue? Well, ah, the first half was a huge success. Even I could tell the acting was top tier. My uh, apologies, Mr. Maloney. Please excuse me for a second. I need to have a little talk with my actors. <laughs> Something's about to get oh, heated. Uh, very well. Hey, while you're at it, uh, this might be a good time to talk future collaborations with Lynette. <laughs> Back off. Are you guys sure this is gonna work? What if Director Mary you pushes back? We're already halfway there. We can't back out now. All we need to do is stick to the plan. What is this plan that you're so intent on hiding from me? Hmm? Director Mary you I uh I thought you were talking to Maloney and the critics. Korantan and Armory have both finished their articles. I went to greet them as a mere formality, but you seem to have availed yourselves of my absence during the first half to defy me. What have you done? Well... Was that really Lynette playing the lead role? <laughs> well done, director. You saw through it. Ta-da! Mario hears Lynette's voice behind him. Beside her is the problem without her. Let me read! <laughs> was the one playing the lead role just now. I switched costumes and masks with Jillian so that I could be the protagonist's companion and stay out of the limelight. Lynette, why on earth would you do this? You know my acting is amateur. The only reason I'm being seen as a pro, let alone a pioneer, is because you have critics supporting the show. But right now there's a whole audience out there and you have no hope of paying them all off. If they'd seen me in the leading role during the first half, they wouldn't be expecting anything more. But what happens now that they've seen Jillian in the role? Well, that's smart. If you force me to play the lead in the second half, 
they'll be wondering, why is the actress suddenly giving such an underwhelming performance right at the climax of the whole story? Is it because she's not a good enough actress to play the role? Or is it the director not all he's cracked up to be? Were the critics wrong? These are just some of the questions that will be on everyone's minds during the second half. And those questions will follow them out the doors of the theater after the show ends. Do you think the critics will still have any credibility then? There's only one way for you to save your reputation. And that's to keep Jillian as the lead all the way to the end. Absolutely not. I'd sooner announce that we're having technical difficulties and need to stop the show. If I keep Jillian as the lead for the second half, what do you think will happen in the curtain call when she takes her mask off? Everyone will see that we've changed actors. Talk about Sue's, Sue's what will your liabilities. They're only here because of you. And what about all the critics who support you? If we get on the wrong side of them, it'll be the death of the whole show. It'd be tickets to refund, fines to pay for breach of contract. The whole troop's hard work would go down the drain. Don't you see how much this would cost us? You can't just take a job on a whim, then abandon your responsibility the moment you don't feel like doing it anymore. You're playing games with other people's hopes and dreams. <laughs> I mean, the director is kind of right. <laughs> director, marry you, please. You're not being fair to Lynette. Actually, Jillian, he's half right. Yep. I did kind of take this on a whim, but my responsibility here is making sure you get back the role that belongs to you. <laughs> and I guess part of that responsibility lies with me, considering I badgered you into accepting the job. Aren't you supposed to be with Chevros and investigating that that Bonnie's case? Hello? Look who finds her. Did you bring all of your props? <laughs> Sorry I'm a little late to the show. Work's been keeping me pretty busy lately. Linny? Uh, what do you want? Do you think you can snap your fingers and make all my problems magically disappear? <laughs> well, he did that before. That might be a little tricky. But instead, I could make something else magically appear. Um, some context would have been um, fine. What's this? A diploma. A draft complaint letter, my contract, your legal fees, reimbursement for the tickets, and an advance on the penalty fee for breach of contract. Huh? Mr. Mario, I'm stepping down from the leading role, regardless of whether you choose to cancel the rest of today's show. <laughs> Did Lynette just cancel in the middle of the show? If you do suffer unforeseen financial losses from this, you're free to seek damages as per the contract. And if you want to file a lawsuit, there's a draft here that you can use if you need it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Law Mr. Lawyer. What? <laughs> I can't believe this. You're literally handing me a lawsuit against you with a straight face. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course. All this mora, it's a pittance to you, isn't it? Must be nice to have the luxury of prior success and fame. Look at us. We're huge stars. One minute we want to go on stage. The next we feel like backing out of the contract. But that's okay. We're famous. We can afford it. You have no respect for other people's work. You're treating other people's hopes and dreams like a big joke. I mean, he's kind of right again. <laughs> You don't give a hoot how much this show means to other people. You don't even care that the whole production might have to shut down because of you. That's not true. I do care. And I'm under no illusion as to how much this show means to you. Oh, brilliant deduction there. Of course it means a lot to me. This is my show. That's the only reason I asked you to be in it in the first place. Really? Then why do your eyes tell a different story? The way you look at me... It's full of contempt, almost as if I've destroyed your work of art. Wait. Wait, what? Ho 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 hold on a moment. What do you mean? Ah, so it was Meryl. You never suspected him in the first place, L L Lumin. Shut up. He's the one who was looking at Lynette with contempt. What? I, I would never think that. A couple days ago, I asked some associates to do some digging for me. 
I was interested to know who else you invited to play the lead apart from Lynette. Weren't you in the other case with Chevros? Again, when did you get the time to do this? Surprise, surprise. Turns out that all the other famous actresses you asked either had prior commitments or weren't a good fit for the role. They all turned you down. Ah, life of a director. And I would have turned you down too, if not for an unlikely set of coincidences. You didn't send those invitations because you were looking for a better actress than Jillian, but because your investor wanted a big name in your show, right? <laughs> Uh, that's why uh, a lot of people hate sponsors. Director, marry you. It's clear as the day that Gillian is an outstanding uh, actress, but fame was the key factor, and that was the one thing she didn't have. And now that they that people saw how good Gillian is, maybe her fame will skyrocket or go straight into the ground. It's a, it's literally a fifty-fifty here. To get Maloney on your side, you chose to make Jillian the understudy. Jillian, Look sorry. For an opportunity for her to take the lead. But then Lynette actually accepted your invitation, and her acting debut was sure to attract attention. <sighs> I bet you were torn at first, weren't you? Do you stick to the tried and tested formula? Choose Lynette, use her celebrity to get the critics on your side, so that you and your investors can line your pockets. Or. Do you choose Jillian so that you and your longtime collaborator can stage the show of your dreams, the original, unedited version of the lost puppet? Whether well, uh, did it because of pressure from investors or because you were lured in by the money, ultimately you betrayed yourself by choosing Lynette. Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't betray myself. You mentioned a prior success and fame earlier. But you're a well-known director yourself, with countless works to your name. Wouldn't that make you successful too? Or maybe, deep down, none of your current achievements really count as success to you. Right now, you have an opportunity to send Jillian onto that stage and perform the second half as you always imagined it, faithful to your original script. Your work would be displayed for all of Fontaine to see, in its true, perfect form. Did... Did you say... <laughs> perfect? His ego just skyrocketed. Will you keep pursuing a kind of success that you don't even value at the cost of your own artistic integrity? Or will you act now before Maloney and the critics can protest and make your dream come true on the stage? And Jillian's dream. In fact, the dreams of the whole troop. The whole troop? Director Mariu. Actually, most of the money Lenny brought came from us. We all chipped in. We've worked with you for many years now. Your troop has been here for you all the way from the empty theaters where we first performed to the Opera House today. We watched as you slowly started down a path you used to despise. The path of powerful connections, drinks, receptions, Backdoor deals with critics and collaborations based on fame instead of talent. But, but this is just a temporary measure. I, I did it for the good of the troupe. And, and besides, this is how the whole industry works. Everyone else is doing it. Yes, we know. Back when you started, you had to bite the bullet and do these things to keep the troupe afloat. But then what happened? You began to embrace these methods more and more, becoming so reliant on them that every show you put out is overhyped by the media, and every script you write is edited to suit some celebrity's needs. Surely you must have noticed what's happening. While we've been performing at bigger and bigger theaters with each show, the applause is getting quieter and quieter each night, and the criticism from people who've seen the show is growing. Maloney's friends are sycophants, they don't care if the audience is disappointed because the show doesn't live up to their glowing reviews. They praise the things they like and skirt around the things they don't. Look, I know everyone's using the same promotional tactics, but does that really make it okay? Well, it's... it's just a stopgap solution. I... As soon as I've made enough Mora, I'll stop. Things will be different next time. 
trust me when money is involved ain't no way anything is enough next time huh yeah next time you won't use your connections next time you won't pay off the critics next time you'll let julian play the lead i love lynette's lynette's mug face <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't work like that if you make some money once you'll want to do it again then again well lin is on my side surely you turn your back on your dreams that's called human greed good job lini i won't turn my back on my dreams any longer director marry you never again me neither <sighs> why do i have to do this oh my god so whatever I do is just 25, 5, that's 13, 18, 21, 24. I need to draw at least one. Can I draw a zero? What would be the chances to draw a zero? It's a nine. Okay. Imagine drawing a zero. I don't think you're, it's possible. I had dreams too. What? Wow, the music stopped right there. Act 3 amidst the rubble. Oh, an unknown period of time elapsed before a group of mechanical puppets finally cleared the rubble, freed the protagonist and reactivated her. They told her, you have been buried here for thousands of years. The mechanical puppets now rule the world. It turned out that the puppets who had started the uprising were none other than the protagonist's companions whom, he, whom she had rescued all those years ago. The protagonist was now revered as a hero by all of puppet kind. The mechanical puppets asked the protagonist what she wishes for, but she only wishes for one thing. The plot here seems a little different from what the review said. The protagonist wanted to return to the stage, so the puppets replaced all her parts with the latest ones available, built her a grand opera house, and summoned a huge audience. And in the end, she forgot herself amidst the applause and cheers of her fellow puppets. Hey, no spoilers! Huh? Wait, hang on, that's not even what's happening. The set has changed back to the one from the first act. Oh, Archons, please let this work out. No need to be so nervous, Director Maryu. We only told you Lynette would be quitting the show to get you to make a decision. We wanted you to believe that this show would have to end after today, no matter what you decided. But in truth, I believe that if we choose our words carefully, there's no reason we can't get Maloney to come around and keep the show going. Lini is putting his experience at fooling people to work. You should, should definitely keep in touch. Yep, you two should definitely keep in touch. You really thought this plan through. <laughs> but I'm not upset about what you've done. What's worrying me now isn't how Maloney will react or whether the show will get cancelled. It's the audience. I've always thought the original script is better, but will it move them like I've always hoped? When Jillian does her curtain call, will they applaud her? This, uh, this first sentence is literally a YouTuber's life in a nutshell. What if people only came to see the show for Lynette? And because of the reviews, what if they don't really care about the show at all? It feels like I've been hiding inside my safe little castle for too long. And now I'm scared to go outside the walls and hear what people really think. Okay, Shite Princess, get on with it. We're right here with you. We'll watch it to the end. Act 4 Amidst the Ruins, original script. The protagonist rejects the other puppet's offer of new parts and a grand stage built in her honor. Her only wish is to see her companions again, but she is told that they gave their lives for the revolution. Their bodies lie buried in the ru ruins where they first met. The protagonist returns to the ruins alone to go her to where her journey first began. She performs one last dance before the graves of her companions. Her secret is burned out, her parts come loose and fall from her body, but she keeps dancing until her body completely shuts down. It has taken her thousands of years, but at last she has finally found a reason for dancing. Wow. Okay. 
This ending is much better. I love how they brought back the set from Act One and gave it a whole new meaning. What a fantastic twist. Lynette with mask is amazing. Time for the curtain call. It's the moment of truth. Will the class continue after I take off the mask? Wow, that I, I think her anxiety just skyrocketed. Confused audience noises. Oh, Furina's here. Hmm. This is what fame looks like when it's truly deserved. I think someone's about to faint. Jillian, you were amazing! Cyril was tearing up when you did your final solo dance. Ah, uh, well, so are you. Really? I was so nervous. My legs felt like they turned to jelly. What looked like an actor unsteady on her feet was in fact a poignant expression of the protagonist's frailty in her last moments. <laughs> or, or whatever. But <laughs> oh, no, I can't take any more of that. Was that? Why wasn't Lynette playing the lead? And here comes the voices. Our articles are already going to press. You better have a good explanation for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was my. Hey, now, it was all of our. Hold on. The decision was mine, and mine alone. They had nothing to do with it. If you have any concerns, gentlemen. Then please direct them to me. Marry you? So it was you? Well then, I trust you'll have no objection to me pulling the plug on this production. I, uh... <sighs> Time for Act 5. Director Marry you, Mr. Maloney, what on earth is going on? Why was Lynette not in the lead role? Okay, so this was their plan all along. It took a lot of convincing for me for her to accept the role, and I had to turn down some big work opportunities to come and watch her performance today. You have some explaining to do. Uh, Lenny, it was all his idea. Marry you, uh, explain yourself. Wait, Lenny, as a matter of fact, this was a piece of performance art in this play. The masks and costumes serve to obscure the differences between characters. And by extension, the difference between human and machine. We took that idea to the next level with an actor swap, blurring the lines between one performer and the next. So it's in service of the ambitious artistic goals of the production. Uh, what? It's similar to deceiving the audience in a magic show. We employed this technique as a means of breaking the fourth wall. It allows the audience to more intuitively understand the cognitive dissonance felt by the protagonist as a machine trying to reconcile the notion of her humanity. The audience's experience mirrors the protagonist's own confusion and becomes part of the artistic performance itself. Uh, hold up! What is this nonsense? Oh, I see. Well, bravo, Director Maryu. You even had me fooled. That's probably Shut up, Lenny. You just don't really understand avant-garde art very well, Lenny. Maybe so, maybe so. Well, perhaps it went over my head, but I'm sure our experts here saw the whole thing coming a mile away. <laughs> you must have worked it out by the end of the first half, surely. Mr. Amory. I just heard that you managed to write your review after just the first two acts. I'm sure that will help director Mario by setting future audiences up for the surprise test at the end. <clears throat> uh, yes, you're right. Director Mary, you and I are old friends. You should have said something. Then I could have played along even better. <clears throat> yes, well, <laughs> to deceive the audience, you must first deceive your closest companions. <laughs> I have to give credit to Lynette and her experience in performing magic. That's what inspired me to take my art to the next level. Hmm? 
You mean your show was partly inspired by Lynette's background in magic? Well, in that case, I'll have to plug it to everyone I know. <sighs> Unfortunately, I think Mr. Maloney is going to cancel the show. Cancel the show? Mr. Maloney, is this true? <laughs> uh, while I accept that deceiving the audience in the manner you did uh, certainly has artistic merit, this is not a magic show, and we don't want our audience demanding their money back. A very valid criticism, and one that I humbly accept. If that happens, we're prepared to reimburse and apologize to any audience members who weren't satisfied with the experience. But based on their reaction today, I think that what that what most people want to see. I think that what most piece what I think that's what most people want to see is an excellent piece of theater. And I don't know. plus, it looks like Jillian is better than me at delivering the excellence people want to see. I'm sure audiences will be very happy with the show if she's allowed to stay in the leading role. Some reviews have said that Lynette gave the performance of the year. Wouldn't you say Jillian's was the performance of a lifetime? Maloney, uh, I believe there should still be time to tweak my article. From the look on Lynette's face, I think she's being sincere. Oh, one other thing. We managed to get a meeting with Lady Farina earlier. All thanks to the Traveler's reputation, of course. You could say that. Anyway, she agreed to write a review focusing on Jillian's performance and the quality of the show as a whole. She promised to give her honest opinion, and I'm sure today's audience will be discussing her performance too. There's sure to be a variety of opinions. But what about you, Mr. Quarantine? How would you rate this show? Oh, I mean, art at its finest, clearly. Uh... But I'll have to give it some thought before I decide exactly what to write. Oh, of course. Always good to put some thought into these things. Especially now, with a growing range of voices out there. <laughs> voices! The competition for readers becomes more fierce when everyone's discussing the topic. <sighs> Quarantan. Quarantan. Not even close to what I, what I was saying. A sour face Maloney lives with the critics in tow. You and Lini. <sighs> okay, talk to the director, Mary Yu. Thank you both so much. Without the two of you, who knows how much further down that cynical path I would have gone. I always told myself that once I'd made enough Mora, I'd get back to doing what I loved. But somewhere along the way. I started to lose sight of what that was. <laughs> Just like those critics with their dishonest reviews, I became all about the trappings of success. At the expense of the art itself. At least you came to your senses just in time and you've got an amazing group of talented people behind you. You're right. Yes. I'm a very lucky man. Anyway, enough about my problems. What are we going to do about the threat letter that Lynette received? I've been looking into it a lot over the past couple of days, but it doesn't seem like it was one of our competitors after all. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on a moment. So it wasn't you? Ah, yes, about that. Um, Lynette, do you oh. have a moment? Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, you're Jillian's sister, right? I'm sorry. Gina insisted on coming to see Lynette. I couldn't stop her. Lynette, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh... Yeah, just showed me <laughs> things I show which mode to use in this situation. <laughs> Wait and see how things play out. Performance. What's she talking about? Never heard of it. Oh, I just need to draw one. Either. Wait, uh, but... Oh, do you mean when we ran into you at the Fool of Sandra? And you said some mean things to me? As I recall, you were only trying to look out for your sister. It was just a few words spoken in anger. Don't worry, whatever it was you said, I've already forgotten. Oh. <laughs> I see. Well... It sounds like Gina knows what she did was wrong. 
Owning up to your mistakes and committing to do better in the future is what counts. I understand that feeling of wanting to stand up for your family when they're being mistreated. Really, I do. But next time, maybe consider a different tactic? Something you can pull off more effectively and without arousing suspicion. <laughs> That's enough. Stop giving her ideas. Got it. Thank you, Lynette. Why do I feel like I'm missing something here? No, you're not. Get on with it. Hey, here you are. I was wondering where you'd all run off to. Great. Everyone's in one place. That makes this so much easier. What's up? <laughs> what do you think? It's group photo time. Huh. We have to commemorate the debut of the Lost Puppet Director's Edition. Director's Edition. Okay, everyone. We all have pretty awkward smiles on our faces in the photo from Hotel de Boer. So this time, no forced smiles allowed. Oh, am I really not allowed to force a smile? He's smiling tough for you. I'll try, I suppose. I think I can manage. Lynette, Traveler, come on. You two should be right in the middle. Three... Two, one, smile! Wait, am I in the photo too? I don't think I did anything about the show. That's cute. No, I didn't save it because I misclicked, okay? Uh, so let's see. This was the fourth ending. Uh, let's see what's here. Oh! Oh, so this is the second decision. I thought something could have changed here. So I, I guess I like. Oops, I like this. Uh, this part too. They're so different, literally. This literally two different stories here with Lynette. I think I like this side. This this uh, hangout type more than uh, the one we used to have. Let's continue from here. Which mode to use in this situation? Wait and see how things play out. That letter. I was the one who wrote it. What? Gina? So it was you? Director, it's time for you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Weird energy. Weird here. energy here. I think we came at a bad time. Lynette, I... Gina must have been worried sick about me. I'm sure even she wouldn't do something so stupid if she was in her right mind. I'm so sorry. I promise I'll make it up to you somehow. Jillian, no! This is completely my fault. And I'm the one who should have to bear the consequences. I got the wrong end of the stick and completely misjudged Lynette. Shall we hear what Lynette has to say? Well, since I haven't actually suffered any losses, seeking redress could be difficult. Maybe we could just let this one slide. Really? Just like that? Are you sure? After all, Gina wouldn't be the first person to ever misjudge me. Right? Uh... True. True. In any case, I think we can all agree it was a misunderstanding and nothing more. No need to overcomplicate things. But still, I was wrong to write that letter. I should own up to my actions, make it up to you in some way. Kids at this age really are stubborn. I'm speaking like I'm 5,000 years old, Guru. Then how about helping out backstage? Uh-huh. Backstage? The crew could always use an extra hand. Plus, it'll give your older sister a chance to keep an eye on you. And stop you getting into any more trouble. Thank you, Lynette. Really, thank you so much. The whirlwind of events is finally resolved a few days later. <sighs> okay. You're finally awake. The show's about to start. You slept on the couch? I'm so much more at home here in the audience. I get to sit on a comfy seat, and I don't have to activate my energy-consuming modes all the time. Hmm. Sounds like Gina got more than she bargained for out of that backstage job. You have her supporting role in the play too? Mary, you said she's a very promising young actress, and she has natural chemistry with her older sister. In their capable hands, the show doesn't need me to attract an audience anymore. Phew, freedom at last. You don't feel even a little disappointed? Hmm, fame is more trouble than it's worth. 
I'd rather leave that side of things to my brother and the others. I'm happiest when I get to sit in a quiet place, watch them do their thing, and cheer them on. Like you're doing now? Yep, exactly like I'm doing now. And this one is beautiful to save. And that was it. There we have it. All of the endings unlocked, all the stories completed, and I even got this side, uh, this story, this story done. So yeah, I think we're done here. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I really did. I absolutely love Lynette and her uh, her hangout was amazing. So uh, if you enjoyed, don't forget, you know, the usual, just a like, maybe a comment, subscribe. Don't forget about the bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.